Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. I'm here with the brand new Casio Privia PXS 7000. This is their brand new keyboard. This along with the PXS 6000 and PXS 5000. Now the 7000 is designed basically for those that are gonna be using this at home. Whereas the 6000 can also be used at home, but it's more focused for gigging pianists. I'll get into that a little bit later or in another video, but right now the PXS 7000 is a work of art. It is really a beautiful piano. It comes with a gorgeous stand, depending on what color you get. It's available in black, white, or harmonious mustard. The price on these are, are really up there. It's $2,499 for the black or white and another $200 for the harmonious mustard. And when I first saw those prices, I thought, right, yeah, right. Who's going to pay that for this? And boy, was I wrong. Wow, when I got this, this is in a league of its own. Now, Casio has these grand hybrid pianos, the GP310 and 510, and those have the absolute best keyboard action developed in conjunction with Casio and C. Beckstein. And aside from those, which are really expensive, like around $4,000 for the 310 and 6,000 for the 510. This is the best keyboard action next to those pianos. Now, let me tell you what they've done. This is a completely redesigned action. This is nothing like the PXS uh, 1100 or 3100 series at all. All the keys here have counterbalances and they have these wood spruce inserts that are into them. And the wood spruce is not there for cosmetics. It also serves to weight the keys additionally. So you have more key weight and you also have a more rigid key for better action. To tell you how unbelievable it is, this is comparable to and comparable to the top other premium pianos in this category, and that would be the Yamaha P515, the Kawai ES920, the Roland FP90X, and the Dexabel S7 Pro M. I actually did a video that compares this to all four of those. You might want to check that out, but it is in the same category, no question. Now, the PXS 7000 and 6000 are similar. The 7000 comes with a really cool stand, a keyboard stand, and that is probably one of the most stable stands I have tried to date. Now, when I do reviews here, I'm not set up to do keyboards on stands. I put that on my own stand because you only see what's here. But it's a Scandinavian style. It's beautiful, but it is solid, very solid, and it has its own built-in integrated pedal system as well. Now, this is 32.6 pounds, which is really light for what it is. It's a portable premium piano. I haven't heard of one of these that are this low in weight yet. It is the flagship model of the new Privia Casio keyboards. The actual piano samples on here are much more detailed. They're much more comparable to the Grand Hybrid GP310 and 510 models. Actually, they're even improved from there. Now, the PXS 7000, as opposed to the 6000, has three premium pianos in it. The 6000 and 5000 only have one. Now, the three premium pianos are the Hamburg, which is basically a Steinway that is built in Hamburg, Germany. The other is the New York Grand, which is basically the Steinway that's built in New York. And the third is the uh, Berlin, which is basically a C. Beckstein 282. And they all sound different. Got three of those premium pianos, whereas the PXS 6000 and even the 5000 only have the Hamburg. But if you ask me, out of the three, 
I like the Hamburg the best. So let's go ahead and explore that. This is the Hamburg. So let's go into the uh, New York. And finally, the Berlin. So obviously between the three, it's your preference as to what you like better. I really like the Hamburg. So to me, whether I have the 7,000 or 6,000, it doesn't matter to me. I like the Hamburg the best. Now, as I was mentioning about the keys, completely redone spruce wood inserts to add to weight and rigidity and so on and so forth. But it is the shortest pivot point in the industry, yet it can compete with the likes of Roland, Yamaha, Dexabel, Kawai. And it is extremely quiet. Let me show you something. If I turn the volume down all the way. It is just about as quiet as a Kawai VPC-1 or an MP-11. Now, while it doesn't have escapement, and while it's labeled as a two-sensor piano as opposed to triple sensor, it's different. It's a scaled hybrid piano action. And what that means is, unlike three sensors, where here's your sensors and here's your key, as you're going down, the three sensors know that you're between sensor one and two or between sensor two and three. But with the build on this, the hybrid scaled hammer action, two sensors, it doesn't matter where you are. It knows where you are at any point in time, which makes it so much easier to do things like trills. And you can do that accurately. And there's a reduced vibration on the key return. Now, what the PXS 7000 comes with, it comes with everything. It comes with the integrated pedal system. It comes with this gorgeous acrylic music stand so that, so that you can rest your music, your sheet music on here. And it's really thick, so you can put something like a book on here. And it's not going to move around. It is really solid. Also comes with this fabric key cover, which is really cool. You just place it on your instrument like so. And you've got your key cover. That is so cool. And as for the keys, again, it has new key tops as well. So it feels more like the ebony and ivory it should feel like on an acoustic piano. Now, if you look at this keyboard right here, it is just absolutely beautiful. This one is black. It's a high luster black, but the drawback of that, it's going to be a fingerprint magnet. But you can get this in white and you can get this in a harmonious mustard, which is a really cool color. Any of the pictures you've seen of that don't do it justice compared to what it really looks like in person. Now, all of these things are touch sensitive and they've got a touch sensitive jog or data wheel. Let me get into that in a minute. But in the meantime, we've got a few physical switches and knobs. And that's going to be here. We got switch one, switch two, and we've got a modulation switch and a mod wheel.
The mod wheel is really cool because as you move it to the front, you can see it changes towards a pink color. And as you move it to the rear, it changes more to, towards an uh, aqua color. Then we have the power switch off and on. And we have the volume knob. Everything to the right of that are touch sensitive, including this cool new jog wheel. So with this jog wheel, I can go up, I can go down, I can go right, I can go left. I can actually even scroll by grabbing it and moving it. It's, it's so cool. I haven't seen anything like that. So this is very unique on the market. Everything else here, you just touch it and you get to it. Now, as for the tone engine, it's a multi-dimensional morphing air AIR, which is acoustic intelligent resonator. 256 note polyphony, which is some of the best in the industry. 400 tones, including 19 best hit pianos. I'll get into that in a second. 50 electric pianos and hybrids, which are a combination of sampling plus modeling. So let me go through how you actually go ahead and select some tones. This is the default when it starts off, the Privia HG, which is the Hamburg Grand. Very cool. Now, if I want to change that, I can just hit enter. And now I've got all the categories that are in front of me. I got grand piano, I've got best hit pianos, I've got various pianos, I've got classic E pianos one and two, I've got clavies, harpsichords, vibraphones, organ one and two. And again, these are just categories and there are a lot of them. So when I get to a category I want, such as the grand piano, I can hit enter again, and now I see all the grand pianos that I have available to me. And you've already heard the Privia Grand HG, which is the Hamburg Grand. They also have a bright and mellow version of the same thing. Then we go into the New York. And a bright version of it. A mellow version. And a Berlin. Bright and mellow. If we go to the next category, which is hit pianos, they try to give it a name that's similar to something that you already know what it sounds like. They can't go into the direct name because of copyrights, but image piano is actually Imagine. Now, I can't play too much more because of copyright issues. But if we go to the next one, which is clock. Let piano. So they make it try to sound as much as the original piano that you've heard and when you've heard the real song, which is really cool. Here's Rhapsodic Piano. Lady. So basically, 
when you see the display here, you're seeing what piano you have. This is the Privia Grand HG, which is the Hamburg. And if I go to enter and we see all these different categories, if I press enter again, these are the Privia Grand pianos, those three that I told you about. If I hit exit, these are the rest. Best hit, various pianos, like all these different things. All right. Now you also have these selections on the right piano, which I showed you, electric piano, which is a basically a category. And we've got taxi electric piano to start with. And we can go from there to a lot of other electric pianos to stage electric pianos. These are the different categories of stage electric pianos. And then there's others. Now, these are the categories. We've got super clavi, harpsichord, we got vibraphone, we got JS organ. And again, these are just the categories. So, and if you look at these bottom four, what they default to when you're in the Hamburg Grand is the F1 key is a demo. And there's a few demos. The F2 key is labeled Metro, which is metronome. So if I hold down the function key and hit play, here's my metronome. And I can change how that sounds. Right now this is 4-4 metronome. Let's exit out of there. And let's go back to F2. And we can go to the guide type. It's set for metronome right now. We're going to change that to drum and we're going to go down here and these are the different drum patterns. This is 8B1. Okay, hit function and play. So you can play along with whatever you want. We can change this B2, 9 beat shuffle. Okay, there's 20 different beats here. So, Instead of a metronome, you can use a drum pattern like that, and you are playing along with drums. That is so cool. That's so much better than and, and so much more inspiring than playing along with a metronome. You're playing along with a drum pattern. That is so cool. Now, you've seen me use this jog wheel, and this is very unique. This is not a physical wheel. This is actually a touch wheel so we can go up we can go down let, let, actually let me go here we can go down we can go up we can go to the right and we can go to the left <laughs> it's so cool and it even gets better so if we go here and you see this list rather than pressing like that up and down I can grab this wheel and turn it with my finger. And <laughs> that is just so cool. And I can do that with various menus. Now there's 400 different tones in here, which is really cool. And that includes the best hit pianos and the 50 electric pianos and the hybrid settings, which are a combination of sampling and modeling. The F1, 2, 3, and 4 keys. 
you can change the entire set of F1 through F4 keys or individual settings of that. And not only that, you can actually name them. This was such a big complaint of the past Casio Privia models where you couldn't name them, where you had names which were numeric and you had to have a piece of paper with the real names written down so you match the numeric name with the piece of paper to find out what it is no longer you can actually name them that is so cool so right now the f1 through f4 are defaulting on the Privia Humber grand to demo metro split and layer and i already showed you demo i showed you metronome there is split and layer so this is the split here you pick what you want for your main thing we got the Privia Hamburg Grand right now, and when we pick F3, now we're going to pick what the split tone is going to sound like on the left, and it's set up for acoustic bass right now. Okay, and if you don't want acoustic bass, basically hit enter. Here are your categories. Pick whatever category you want, and you can go from there. If you hit enter here, now you have all of the individual sounds. So, <laughs> it's so cool. All right, now let's get out of the uh, split mode. So we're back to the Humber Grand. And then there's layer. And I can actually choose layer and split at the same time. So what happens then, if I choose layer and split at the same time, the layer is going to be the top half. I'm layering it with whatever two sounds I want. And the uh, split point is going to be whatever sound I choose for that bottom half. You'll see this circle here with a button inside. That is for the top. I can go ahead and change these. Okay. And if I go down to the bottom here, the circle with the button in it becomes this one. This is the standard set of F buttons. If I go to the right, this is another bank, store, freeze, name, Registration one, two, three, four. You can set any four registrations you want for favorite pianos and so on and so forth. There's so much stuff here. I'm not going to go into it, but basically, to change an F key, F1, 2, 3, 4, basically hold down the function button and the F key you want to change. This is F1 but you can move it to F2, 3, 4. They're all set for tone category at the moment. If I hit enter, now look at all of these different things that I can set the F button for. If you can think of it, you can set it. <laughs> there is so much here. And it's the same thing with these buttons on the left, these programmable button one and button two. Just hold down the function key, hit the button, and you can change what is assigned to. Right now, the default for button one is arpeggio. So if I hold down a chord, okay, and I can change that pattern. There's a whole bunch of different arpeggio patterns I can change that to. So if I press it again, I turn it off. And the second one is for the app, which I'll get into either later or into a separate video. And the square button is basically a modulator. Now let me hold down this modulation. Hear the difference? I'm holding it down. When I don't hold it down, I get what we expect. Now there's also a Casio Music Space app 
that you can run on your tablet or iPhone. doesn't matter if it's Android or iPhone. It's going to run just the same. And because this is Bluetooth, you don't have to connect any kind of cables. It communicates with each other. Let me hook this up again. Casio Music Space. I'll go to Casio Music Controller. And it's not connected right now, but let's go ahead and connect that. All right. And you have all these different things that you can control with this app. But we're going to go into the remote controller. Okay. And we're going to load it so that we can send from the app to the piano. Okay, and these are the different things that we can control. There's a lot here, but tones, and this is really cool because we can choose what tones we want here. Rather than going through the front panel, we can go through here. These are the different categories here. So if I want a harpsichord, I press that. These are the different harpsichords that are available to me. If I want an organ, I press organ. These are the different organ categories that I have available to me. Here's a full drawbar organ. Rock organ two. Maybe not the best choice. There's other choices that would be better. But I'm just going through this to show you an example. Here's a Farfisa. V organ. Click organ. Rotary. Okay. Then there's organ two. Here's a, a chapel organ. Here's a pipe organ. A, theor a theater organ. There's just so much here. Uh, you want a string ensemble. Here's all your different strings. Let's try a stereo string. This is an excellent way to try out what you want the sound to be when you do a layer or a split. Here's a, a nylon guitar.
it just goes on and on and on. I mean, it is so cool. So it's an easier way to choose stuff with this app than it is with this. But you don't need the app. You can do everything you can do with the app with the front panel. Let's close this. Keyboard sound and source. We can go to pedal and we can control what the pedals do and so on and so forth. We can go to the acoustic simulator and we can control all kinds of resonance. We can control the string resonance, the damper resonance, the open string resonance, the aliquot resonance, and the damper noise. Now, these are all set to tone and what tone means is this is what the default Casio settings are. You don't have to go with those. So if we go with string resonance, let's hold down CEGC. Okay, so you can hear that. And if I change that to a higher level like 10, Then there's damper resonance, open string resonance. That's the top part where there's no dampers. It's always vibrating. So if we go to that, tone is the default Casio tone for that. If we turn that off, okay. Now if we go to the extreme, 10. Now, aliquot resonance, let me just go back to the piano for that. Aliquot resonance. Aside from the open strings here, the upper third of the register, Bluther actually developed this, and Steinway has their own version of it. But basically, when you have three strings per key, they added a fourth string. And the fourth string resonates when you press the uh, key that, hits the three strings and that gives it a kind of an additional resonance and you can control that right here we go to effects we can change all kinds of effects here there's a lot of stuff that we can do with this app that we can do with the keyboard without menu diving so it makes it a lot easier and when we go to the mixer section here we can actually get to the reverb section a lot easier. Same thing with the chorus and the hall reverb return, all that kind of stuff. And when we get to the arpeggiator, we can change a lot of stuff here, including the note length. Listen to this. Let's increase the note length. decrease it so you can notice the difference right there um ex button piano position the mixer the midi all that kind of stuff you can get to with the app so if you don't want to take the time to menu dive and learn where everything is the app is an excellent way to get around all that it's really easy when you have a visual representation here so let's talk about the speakers now. There is two different pairs of speakers here. Both of them are run by a stereo amp each of 16 watts, eight and eight for one pair and eight and eight for another pair. Gives you a total of 32 watts. 
Now there's room placement for those. So they adjust the EQ, which is gonna be good for wherever you have this keyboard, whether you have it on the included stand, or if you have it against a wall, or if you have it on a desk, or if you have it in the middle of the room. There are settings for that. It's gonna make it sound perfect for that setting. The speakers are all front firing. So when you're playing for an audience, it's going to be going projecting towards them. And those speaker settings are going to help. They even have surround sound and there's three types of surround sound settings, which is really cool. I cannot duplicate that here with microphones. You're gonna need your ears for that. So go to your local music retailer and check that out. Now, like I said, this compares with Yamaha, Kawai, Roland, their top premium pianos. But unlike any of those, this is the only one on the market that runs on eight AA batteries. How cool is that? Now, when you are running on that kind of power, that changes the uh, 32 watts on the speakers down to 12 watts. So basically three watts per speaker, three, six, nine, 12. Still, I mean, it is cool. You can still run this and get great results with that. Those batteries, that really gets my attention. I can take this anywhere and play this anywhere. Now let's talk about the back panel. The back panel, from right to left, facing the back panel, we've got the DC power from AC adapter. We've got the proprietary triple pedal connector. Next is the expression pedal input or half damper pedal input. Next is the left and right quarter inch line outputs, which is great for professional use. So you can feed this to front of house or a mixer or whatever. Then there's the mic gain knob. Yes, you can use a microphone with this, which is really cool because you can record with MIDI or audio. And when you're recording this audio, you can actually hook up a mic with effects that are built into here and record that along with the audio. Then there's the USB-B for connection to your computer and the USB-A for USB flash or thumb drives or included Bluetooth adapter. When you do use the Bluetooth adapter, you won't be able to put a flash or a thumb drive in there and record your stuff, but it has internal recording for either audio or MIDI. And from that, you can transfer it to a drive and then from there onto your computer. Now, it has a mic input with DSP effects. So let me go over that right now. This is a Shure SM57, the most popular mic in the world. And like all professional mics, it has an XLR connection. And the Casio, like other machines like the Roland FP90X, has a quarter inch input. So whether you're using this or an FP90X or another thing that accepts mic input, basically you wanna get a cable which is an XLR connection at one end that's gonna plug into this and a quarter inch connection at the other. Now let's go over a few tips and tricks. If you wanna disable all this, so basically where your hands are, you're not gonna trigger anything that you don't want to trigger. Basically hold the exit key down and now everything disappears. You've got panel lock. You can put your hands anywhere you want on this, okay? If you want to go back and unlock it, press the function key. That is really cool. And basically for internal audio recording, let's go to function. And from there, we're going to go to song and song type. Song type. We can choose whether we're going to record MIDI audio to the USB drive or audio internal. And whether you include audio USB or internal, whatever you record, 
the microphone that's also hooked up is also going to be recorded with that. How cool is that? Let's exit. So basically, that's it in a nutshell. This is a really, really, really cool keyboard. I have compared this. I have the Roland FP90X here. I have other keyboards here that compare with it. And I can tell you, this really is a special keyboard. I urge you to get to your local retailer and try it out for yourself. Now, for those that want to buy one of these, I have some of the lowest prices in the United States on this. So contact me at www.pianomanchuck.com. Ask for a quote, and I will give you a price that you are going to be very happy with. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.